Hi, my name is Connor Smith, and I'm a landscape painter. And this is another video about colour. You might have seen my Truth About the Colour wheel, and you know all about my CMY colour palette. But um, this video is really about have you ever looked properly at colour? And if you do, you would know the beauty of magenta. <laughs> So you might ask yourself, so what's special about magenta? It's the same as all other colours, and that's not technically true. So um, the way we see colour is we only see colours between the wavelengths of red right through to blue, which is the visible spectrum. And you might ask yourself, well, magenta is not present in that visible spectrum. So how can we see the colour of magenta? How can we perceive it if it's not in the visible spectrum? If you've ever taken a prism uh, to refract the light from a white light that comes into the prism and then refracts off in its different lights, you will see light split up into these colours here, as you would do in a rainbow. And magenta is not present. So let's look at how we perceive the light that we see. The light that we see between here and here. And we do it through cone receptors in our eyes. And these cone receptors detect round about the middle, round about low wavelengths, or round about high wavelengths. And we only have three of them. So we can detect middle, low and high. So somewhere between red and green, our eyes would perceive yellow because the cones in the middle would be saying, yeah, it's near me. Uh, the, the cones at the bottom would be saying, yep, yeah, it's near my wavelength. So your brain says, right, we'll make that a yellow. So let's look at what happens when we perceive cyan. Cyan lands between blue and green in the spectrum, just here. So our middle cone, our medium wavelength cone would be saying, yep, yeah, somewhere right here. And our blue wavelength cone would be saying, yeah, it's, it's up here a little bit. So we would label that in our heads as a new color cyan. And that continues throughout the spectrum. Now when we actually look at what happens if light of a high wavelength or a, a short wavelength and light of a low wavelength hit our eyes at the same time. Our cone receptors are saying yes there's some of this wavelength, there's some of this wavelength. So what it doesn't do is it says as it says it must be somewhere in between. It doesn't mix them and put it in between because in between would be green and we have a receptor for green or medium wavelength light and it's saying there's no green light there. So what our head does is it mixes the blue, mixes the red and it makes a new colour and that colour is magenta. Now actually in our heads magenta is no more special than any other colour. Why is that? Because every colour is actually a figment of our imagination. It just so happens that the regular colours in the visible spectrum have a wavelength attached to them. Magenta is just the colour that completes our circle to allow us to use our colour wheel that I talk about on my other videos. Because our heads see light as a continuous wheel. If you continue to mix colour through the spectrum you will come back to the start but in the visible spectrum wavelengths going from short to long, long to short have a start and a beginning and they don't actually occur as a circle. But as painters or designers or people that use colour our concern is to the human eye. Our allegiance is to the eye. We're not worried about some alien from outer space coming down and seeing this magenta and saying what the hell is that? Uh, that doesn't exist because they might not have cone receptors, they might have a different way of perceiving light altogether. And in which case, magenta wouldn't make much sense to them. But we, as people with eyes with three cone receptors, we understand the circular concept of light, we understand magenta, and we understand how light mixes and how paints mix. So 
So that's what sets magenta apart from the other colours. It is just existing, in existence, so that our heads can take the visible spectrum as a line and adapt it into a wheel, into a triangular concept, because we have three cone receptors. But the beauty, the beauty about magenta is that it rem reminds us that actually all colour is just a figment of our imaginations. Everything has just been labelled with a colour so that we understand the differences in wavelengths. And that raises an interesting, often argued point. Do I see the same colour as you when you see yellow? Is my yellow the same as yours? And there's an interesting video, more from a science point of view, online uh, that you can get on YouTube. And it is, uh, is my red the same as your red? And I'll put a link in the description of this video to that. And it's quite interesting to, to watch it. But what we can understand from this and the concept of magenta is that what you should really be doing when you're painting or when you're creating designs is you want the viewer to look at that subject differently. You want not to be limited by your own perception but only be limited by your imagination which has no limits. There's no right and wrong, there's only ideas. And to free your ideas, understand that there is no limits.